YouTube. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. Mr. Terry is a continuing search for historical knowledge found here on YouTube. All right, today's video comes from Alternate History Hub, and it is titled, What If Japan Never Attacked Pearl Harbor? So this channel, if you didn't know, um, goes into okay, well, what's called alternative history. Basically, you know, if a specific thing hadn't happened, what would the effect be? And this is a very interesting one because um, the attack on Pearl Harbor by Japan on the United States is what directly brought the United States into World War II. So right away, the question would have to be asked, do you think that would have kept the United States out of the war, right? Um, or at least maybe with Japan or there's there's it's, it's always a, a branch of different ideas that can happen. That's how alternate history really does work. I mean, it's not always just one timeline affects a lot of things. So would the United States have just uh, maybe joined up in Europe later on or um, maybe they would join anyways in both theaters? I don't know, um, but let's see what they're looking at. And I'll try to give you guys my ideas of what um, what I kind of find uh, find out with this. I find with a lot of their alternate history videos that I actually agree with a lot of them um, for most of the part. So uh, because they generally, I think, keep things in the realm of possibility, which is great. So we're going to get started here in just a second. All right. Uh, before we begin, the original video link is down below. Make sure you uh, uh, click that and give the video a like, view, all that good stuff so you can support the channel there. And let's go ahead and get started. This video was sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online service where you have access to a huge catalog of tutorials that give lessons on skills in multiple different fields. If this piques your interest, they're offering a free trial for the first 700 who click down below. You can find out more at the end of this video. Day which will live in infamy, set by President Attack on. Okay, so we'll just go slow. Japan brought America into the war by an attack on Pearl Harbor. I've talked about this too, about why this attack happened. Um, there are some interesting things to, uh, you know, to, to consider. I guess just briefly, one of the, the the most common things that people talk about is it was a re it was a, a basically a reaction to the United States putting an oil embargo on Japan because of Japan's actions out um, in that uh, in, out in the Pacific, and Japan was completely dependent on foreign oil, especially American oil, to to fuel their their navy and their country. So it was kind of an act to um, in response to that. <laughs> But which is, by the way, very possible because the United States and Japan were actually in some diplomatic negotiations about the oil embargo, about what it would ha what, what would happen, maybe uh, what would the United or what would would Japan want to know what you know maybe requirements the United States would have for the oil embargo to end? They were actually in negotiations, which brings a lot of intrigue into the Pearl Harbor attack. Is why do this military attack while diplomatic negotiations were in fact going on? British brains, American brains. brawn, and Russian blood won the war. When Stalin initially said those Fair words. Enough. He spoke of the industrial might of the Americans. Guns, tanks, planes, ships. In World War II, the United States was a military production machine, an engine. Every engine needs that initial spark to awaken it. More importantly, something to fuel it. That spark for America was the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. That fuel was the urge for revenge. There's a reason the 20th century for America can be divided before Pearl Home Harbor Tom. and after. Before the United States was an island, the public didn't want to give any more in the fight against the Axis other than weapons and supplies. And that also goes back to World War One. America didn't want to get involved in World War One either, but was brought in in a way by multiple things. And then after World War One, it furthered the American idea that the United States needs to stay out of Europe. Europe's a mess, stop getting involved, which is again, another reason why the United States waited so long and maybe, all right, maybe make some money and stuff. But one thing we know about things when it comes to war is, uh, 
can you truly be seen as neutral or staying out of war if you are doing military arms business or doing business with one side of the war? And if you are like the Germans in both wars, you're obviously not going to view the United States as somebody being out of the war because you are directly doing business with an enemy of them. So you can see that perspective. That was until the war came to them. The sneak attack on Pearl Harbor was the perfect combination to enrage an entire country. In the span of one day, isolationism sure. became a thing of the past. It was an overnight thing. So how would... World War I was not like that. It took a series of events, months, for this to go on. Um, United States basically was overnight saying, all right, we're in. World War II have continued if Pearl Harbor was never attacked. It's a great question. Let's imagine it one really possible alternate timeline. It is December 7th, 1941. Everything is simply calm. And that's because Emperor Hirohito, a man with a weak hold on his militaristic generals, actually enforced his will. Jo yeah, the ever since, uh, basically ever since after World War One, the real power of Japan was in the military. It was it was a militaristic society. They could do about whatever they want. Um, the government was kind of powerless. Almost reminds you of like the old like feudal era where. The emperor maybe didn't have all that much power. Who was actually in power in Japan was who controlled the military. Now in the feudal era, it was the shogun who controlled the samurai. But maybe in this era, it's hey the new the new navy and stuff like that that uh, really truly has the power. Japan will not carry out a sneak attack on the U.S. From this point on, the relationship between the two countries is tense, but never goes past that. They're separated by the largest ocean on Earth. And without some instigation, it stays like that. For some reason, out of FDR's control, the United States never enforces an oil embargo on Japan. Instead, he remains in Washington, frustrated that the Americans have to sit out the war. Britain is on the edge of a Nazi Europe, and the Soviets have been invaded. The public, however, doesn't want to send their men off to die like they did in the Great War. Okay, so... Timeline is nothing's changed in Europe, right? I guess you get the failure at the Battle of Britain by the um, Germans are unable to invade Britain, which then they turn their uh, attention to the Soviets who are able to push them back and uh, probably the same fate for for uh, I, I'm, I'm the one that generally believes that the same fate would have happened to the Germans even without the United States. Maybe it would happen a little slower, but the Soviets would have pushed them back and likely probably defeated them. Only 8% supported a war against Germany. Congress would never vote for such a was. thing. That's and it stays that way. Only 8%. With no war between Japan and America, Hitler never blunders into declaring war on the US. FDR can never send over troops. Don't know about that. Not quite sure because... I mean, although... I mean, if you, if you listen to Hitler's speech about the declaration of war which you can you can find um on america he cites the other stuff doesn't really get into necessarily the japan stuff he gets into things like the lend lease act and the whole idea that the americans were out here supporting the british financially and selling materials and you can't see them as a neutral party if they are going to be supporting the enemy of the germans and that's what that would have cited so um i don't know if that would necessarily be the case that germany then would not have uh, declared war in the United States. I mean, it's possible. It is possible, but um, I don't think that means because if, if Pearl Harbor had happened, that Germans would not have done that. I don't, I don't think I'm fully on board on that. As none of the public wants to get involved. By December 7th, 1941, the Japanese have been fighting another enemy on the frozen coasts of eastern Siberia. Japan is at war with the Russians. Yep. Both the United States and happened. Soviets posed a threat to Japan. Because, go back to the map, this area, Manchuria and stuff, was already a place that the Japanese had fought um, back in what was called the uh, Russo-Japanese War, um, in the, uh, right at the turn of the, the, the um, 20th century. Uh, Japan defeated Russia, but they Russia has a lot of interest in this region as well, because specifically they were both... Um, uh, Japan wanted these resources and Russia wanted them as well, as well as direct access to the waterways here so they could get warm ac uh, access to warm water. With the Russians. Both the United States and Soviets posed a threat to Japan. However, Japan chose to go to war with only one. 
With no embargo, the US isn't that target. With Germany invading the Soviets from the west, the Japanese saw it as a good opportunity to seize the less defended Siberian coast. With such a long I can see that. I agree with that. Distance, it'd be difficult to reinforce it as well. So they carried out an invasion of the USSR. For the last few months, the Japanese have been fighting a harsh war against the defending Russians. This, by the way, is different, though, than the Russo-Japanese War, which is basically a naval and part of the land, like invading into Russia. We all know what happens when you invade Russia. <laughs> it doesn't end well for anybody. To Russia compensate the for their lack of armor, they chemical bomb cities dotting the border, killing hundreds of thousands to lighten up defenses. Throughout 1942, their advancement, just like their German counterpart, begins to stall. The war was won with Russian blood, and the Soviets, with their vast manpower, still push back Germany. In Europe, without the Americans, D-Day cannot happen. Not like it did in our timeline. No. Eventually, no. Berlin would have to fall to the Russians. It did More anyway. Troops it, would... it, it fell to Berlin. I mean, sorry, it fell to the Russians anyways. The Russians are the ones that reach Berlin. Um, fastest, or the, they were the first ones to do that. So, another decision that had to be made here was uh, would the Russians be able to defeat Japan and Germany at the same time? Yeah, I guess so. Um, it would have been a lot even more deadly for the Russians, which was already crazy because they have like double the casualties of anybody. Would be sacrificed to defend the Eastern Front even if that means leaving France and other occupied territories open. The Nazis didn't believe in retreat, especially for Germany. With a drastically smaller enemy, only now could a D-Day-like invasion occur, involving a smaller force of British and Canadians. Even if the wait was a few months, the Soviets are able to invade further west in this timeline, seizing all of Germany and Eastern Europe in the process. Germany isn't divided between East and West in this alternate world. All of Germany is simply communist. Good point. Very good point. All the way up through France would be now incorporated probably into the Soviet Union, uh, which it's a huge boost to them. But I'm also not, I don't know if I'm 100% in on that. I got to think about it more. Question again, come back to mind. Could the Soviet Union defeat Japan and Germany at the same time? I don't know what you guys think about that. I think if they did, it'd be hard for them to exert as much power over like Central Europe like they did um, in our actual timeline, which they were able to do because they didn't have to really fight the Japanese and have to exert those resources, but fighting the Japanese would have been very brutal. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I don't know if I, I mean, this makes sense in a way that they could take, you know, they, they, this would now be under Soviet occupation, um, but I'm not 100% into yet. I have to think about that more. What do you think though? Meanwhile, in the East, the Japanese can't hold back the Soviets as more reinforcements arrive after the fall of Germany. Japan now is facing the full might of the USSR. Instead of their empire falling piece Japan. by piece thanks to American island hopping in the Pacific, Japan might face an actual worse fate. Stalin was quite vengeful. The Japanese teamed up with Hitler, caring little for the lives of his own troops. Such a bloody, devastating invasion could be very possible. The Japanese... And I don't know. I have a hard time going into... I, I, they, I hope I'm following that they think that now the Soviet Union would invade Japan. I don't know about that. I mean, even the United States avoided it and, of course, used atomic weapons. But that was not something the United States, of course, wanted to do. And you saw what happened to that. And the Soviets were. Um, that's an interesting question, too. Atomic bombs. If the United States doesn't get involved, then they maybe they don't actually do the Manhattan Project. Which, of course, the Soviets took information from the Manhattan Project to eventually develop their atomic weapon. That wasn't until 1949, though. Um, so there, there wouldn't have been an atomic bomb type of surrender for Japan by the Russians. But a, a, an invasion of Japan? I don't know if they could do it. I, I mean, I still wasn't even fully on board that they would totally be able to, to, to like defeat the Japanese because they're fighting the Germans at the same time with no outside help. 
Hmm. He's face an actual invasion for the first time in history. And by the end, they are virtually obliterated as a society. Hmm. Stalin helps them rebuild, but sets... So again, this might be the hardest one I've had to accept. I re I'm really interested to know what you guys think. Um, you can put comments in or come join our Discord server and you can get talking about that. Link down below. Sets up a puppet communist government. To America, hmm. who has sat out of the war, all they witness is the new rise of Soviet global dominance. In Europe, only Britain, France, and perhaps the Scandinavian countries remain democratic. All of East Asia has fallen to communism as well. It is in this moment, the end of World War II, with a Soviet victory, where the concept of isolationism begins to end. To the public, staying out of the war brought nothing but glory for the Reds. The United States is in okay. a war. So people might come back and be like, man, maybe we should have get involved, should have been involved, but it would have been to stop the Soviets. Because um, if you don't know, going up into World War um, to World War II, Americans were far, far more afraid of Joseph Stalin than they were Adolf Hitler. Right? It wasn't until the Hitler atrocities and stuff come into play, but uh, that was always the bigger fear. So you know, having known that hey, they should get involved in this to stop Soviet expansion that could have changed their tune about um, the isolationism world where its ideals are more alone than ever perhaps this is the spark that awakens the american machine not a machine for war but a machine to prepare for what many assume will be the next fight if the japanese empire lost the war at home then perhaps its large navy and territory could have remained but now that territory is just in the hands of a Soviet puppet state. Hmm. Because of this new world, a mentality, much like in our own timeline, could arise. To protect themselves, the West would need a special type of weapon. One that was conceived years back, but never truly tested. Perhaps it might even things out in the inevitable next conflict. World War Three. Okay, so it's almost like they're... they're progressing the fact that this would have it may not have actually been a cold war but that conflict would have started and would have maybe been more likely that you actually got fighting between the Soviet Union and the United States I don't know I don't know if much changes with what actually happened with the cold war it almost seems like to me that still plays out the same the nuclear bomb However, this is simply one scenario. We'll never truly know well, what would have happened had America things plans. gone different. Unless they get independent. But it's always a fun idea to think about these things. How history happens. in the world that we live in today because of it. This is Cody of Alternate History Hub. This video was sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community get with 17,000 classes in videography, productivity, photography, and more. If you have a passion, Skillshare has a lesson for it. For Should me, I just make animations of videos, me instead of the most actual me? Lessons was in we'll make editing like a CGI and If you have a Mac, I would highly recommend visual storytelling with Final Cut Pro. It's a great starting guide for those getting into editing on a Mac. If you're into writing as well, I would also recommend writing for consistency, finding your creative voice, to be a good inspiration for aspiring writers. Premium membership begins around $10 a month for unlimited access to learning, but the first 700 members who click on the link in the Ooh. description below will get two months for free. Click quick because space is limited and might go fast. Either way, if you're getting into a new field, Skillshare could be the gateway to learning more. So click on the link down below to get started. This is Cody of Alternate History Hub. Cool. We're officially done. Okay. All right. Okay. So yeah, I brought up a lot of questions uh, for things, a whole bunch of them. Um, I'm not completely sold that this if if Japan had invaded Russia that Soviet Union would have just come out the way that they did. I mean, they had them coming out, like, annihilating both of them 
and then like exerting dominance over all of Central Europe and Japan. That seems like that's not necessarily maybe a natural progression. I mean, it's in the realm of possibility. Do I think that's the probable outcome? I don't know. I don't. I don't think so necessarily. I think it could happen, but I don't necessarily think it would have for sure happened. But you could back me up on that of what you think the state of the Soviet Union would have been having to fight them off. Not only win, but then just dominate after. Okay. Uh, I think the Cold War relationship with the United States Soviet Union does seem like it probably would have been similar uh, with that. I, I don't know if they would actually go to a full war. Um, would the United States still have invested as much as it did into something... Um, like the so or the atomic bomb, yeah. I mean, probably, maybe a little bit later, right? Because they weren't didn't have to have as much early motivation as they did potentially with Japan. So that you know could happen. Would the Soviets have still gotten either the plants in the United States from the bomb or made their own one, uh, totally independent? Yeah, possibly. So yeah, I don't know. It just it seems like to me the Soviet Union would have been, yeah, maybe would have won the those two the the, the fighting those wars, but would have been severely taken back economically and militarily and stuff like that. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, convince me, <laughs> go ahead and convince me there. Okay. Anyway, that, that gives a lot of, a uh, lot of things to think about and hopefully you guys can get thinking about join our community. You can talk in the comments if you like, or, um, head over to our, door, or to our discord. If you'd like to talk a little bit more directly there, that would be, uh, uh, very cool. All right, on the way out, a few plugs. Um, definitely join my new gaming channel I created, Mr. Terry Gaming. Soon I will be con uh, converting all my gaming-related stuff over there. And uh, so definitely join that. There will be a link down below or just search uh, on, Go uh, on YouTube. Mr. Terry Gaming should pop up there. Link to the original video is down below. Definitely get involved in that. If you're into World War II uh, and you would like to have some cool World War II merch, go down below on our Teespring campaign. is a Mario Kart-themed World War II shirt. Uh, with Stalin and Hitler, and it's kind of, you know, plays into that. Uh, anyways, okay, thanks to everybody. Thanks to patrons. Thanks to everyone for subscribing. And thanks for just uh, watching and being part of our community here on YouTube. All right, with that, we uh, will go ahead and end here, and we'll see you next time. Bye.